I was messing around with geometry nodes the other day, trying to make something cool, and I figured that the loop of infinitely scaling objects might be a good project. So I started trying to figure out how to make something like that, and after a while, I came up with this infinitely scaling and regenerating stack of cubes. So let me show you how to make it yourself. Let's start by instancing the cubes. Go to the geometry nodes workspace, and add a new node tree. Add a mesh line, an instance on points node, and a cube. Then connect it to the instance socket. Also, add a set position node between the cube and the instance on points node, and set the C offset to 0 0.5. This makes it so that the bottom of the cube is used as the origin point when instancing. To get the infinite scaling effect, we want to scale the cubes depending on where on the mesh line they are located. And we can do that with an index node connected to the scale socket of the instance on points node. Next, we need to set the positions of the cubes to be relative to their size. So, for example, the cube with index 0 will have a size of 0, and the C position of that cube should also be 0, and so on. There are a few ways to do this, and my approach would be to use a node called Accumulate Field. If you want a proper introduction to this node and what it can do, I highly recommend that you watch a 5-part tutorial series on it by Johnny Matthews, who is actually the person who made the node. But in short, it gives you the accumulated value of each index up to that index, and we can use that to offset the positions of the cubes depending on the accumulated value at the index that they are instanced on. Add a set position node, an accumulate field node, and a combine XYZ node. Connect the index node to the value of the accumulate field node, then connect the trailing socket to the C socket of the combine XYZ node. And finally, connect the combine XYZ node to the position socket of the set position node. Now that the cubes are stacked properly, we can move on to creating the animation. Even though there is a cube of size 1 at the bottom of the stack, there is actually one more cube below it, with a size of 0, because the index value starts at 0. So if we add a math node set to add, and gradually increase the value from 0 to 1, we can use that as the base of the looping animation. If you're wondering how I made this reroute, make sure that you have the add-on Node Wrangler enabled, that comes with Blender by default. You can then create connected routes like this by pressing shift and right mouse button, and dragging over the connections that you want to reroute. To make the animation automatically play, add a scene time node, and connect the second socket as the bottom value of the add node. To then turn the animation into a seamless loop, set the frame rate to 60 in the output properties tab. Then set the end frame of the timeline to 60. As a final stylistic touch, I will adjust the scaling factor of the cubes. Add a math node set to power after the add node. Then set the exponent to 2. Then add a math node set to multiply. and set the bottom value to 0.1. This makes the scaling a bit smoother when the animation loops. And that's it for the jump nodes part, so let's set up a scene for rendering. In the Output Properties tab, set the resolution X and Y to 1080. Add a camera, and set the focal length to something like 180. Then position the camera below the bottom cube, and point the camera towards it. Add an empty, and in the camera tab, enable depth of field, and select the empty as the focus object. Then set the f-stop to something like 1. This helps intensify the scaling of the cubes that are farther away. 
I will also add a plane and scale it and position it above the cubes to create a backdrop. Finally, add a sun lamp. I set the strength to 3 and the angle to 65. Then rotate it until you get the look that you like. I will use cycles to render my animation, but if you want to use Eevee, I suggest enabling contact shadows in the sunlight properties to add some extra shadows. If you want a different color on the backdrop, you can add a material to the plane and change the color along with other properties like roughness. Also, if you want a different color on the cubes, you can create a material and assign it in a node tree with the set material node. Once you're happy with your scene, go to the Output Properties tab and set the file format to FFmpeg Video. Set the container to MPEG4. Set the quality to Perceptually Lossless. And select a folder that Blender will save the video in. Then all that's left is the render animation, either by pressing Ctrl on F12 or by going to Render, Render Animation. What's cool about this setup is the fact that you can change the instance object without changing anything else. For example, if you swap the cube for a cylinder with a depth of 1 and a radius of something like 0.7, you can adjust the amount of vertices of the cylinder to create everything from a triangle to a circle. Or you could use a curve converted to a mesh as the instance object. And you can even use the animated index values to procedurally rotate the instances. My point here is that once you have the basic setup, you can fairly easily create endless variations just by modifying a thing or two in a node tree. You just need to have the courage to experiment a little bit, and if something goes wrong, you can always come back here. I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.